I don't think there's a racing driver in the world that doesn't talk about losing downforce and that couldn't get near the car in front. It's just the thing, isn't it, of modern day motor racing. It is, it's really important. And how yeah. exciting has it been for you to work with our team, our 3D team? Really to exciting, make this because work? normally I would see scientific information that isn't so easy to understand if you're not deep into the technicalities of aerodynamics. So it's, it's been really, well, really it's great, great to fun. have your input. Let's, let's start the video and you feel free, please, to talk us through it and stop at will. Well, here we so have, I mean, this is obviously starting with a basic Formula One car, which is um, generically liveried, as you can see. But all of a sudden we've got a car behind. So the, the wake of a Formula One car is quite complex and we'll see that in a little while. And both cars are affected by proximity, right? In particular, the one at the back. And let's and make one thing clear from this point: in that we're not so specific that we're talking about different types of Formula One car. We're talking about a generic Formula One car here, right? Th there are mm. subtle differences in the way the wake is created and the way the wake affects different cars. But unless you are working within the individual teams. Right. You'd be talking rubbish if you said oh, ex this car will be significantly better than the other at coping with a wake because it'll depend also which car is in, in, in front of okay. a particular car. All right. Ah. So these are the areas of the car that generate the main parts <coughs> of the downforce, highlighted a little bit by how much downforce they're generating. And so the front wing is the, uh, the master player here. Well, the front wing is the master player in terms of controlling the flow around the rest of the car, but not the master player in terms of how much power it generates. And uh, so the front wing's generating a bit more than 20% of the downforce. The rear is creating a bit less than 20% of the downforce and the floor, the rest of the floor, is generating somewhere of the vicinity of 60% of the total downforce of the car. So you don't really see the important surfaces on the floor. Mm. And there are other important areas like the barge boards and all the other things around where they they don't create large amounts of downforce and, and in fact a lot of the other devices on the car actually create lift. They don't create downforce, but they are moving the flow to places where the main downforce generators can work a little bit better. And then when you have a car behind, it starts to lose, and it actually loses a long way behind, but the car behind starts to lose quite a bit of downforce. And when you're really close like this, if you're precisely behind uh, another Formula One car today, and you are, let's say, half a car length behind, I wouldn't be surprised if you're working on 25% of your downforce, and that's why you can't, you just can't get that close anywhere in a corner. In a, in a straight line, you want to get that close so you minimize the drag, and then pull out at the last minute with the risk you have, that you'll have a bit less grip when you do a sudden. Yeah. So this wow. is a really great way, yep, this is lovely. This is a really great way of showing when a car is punching its way through the air, you create a lot of, uh, a lot of drag. We're, we're creating lots of vortices, we're moving the air around. But, but basically what the car does is the, the air is being dragged along with the car. So the air starts stationary, the car punches its way through, and the air gets dragged along. And that, you're giving that air momentum, and that momentum has to slowly dissipate in space. And so even in the 90s when we were doing simulations 16 car lengths behind, 32 car lengths behind, you could start to see a difference, even back then, that sort of distance. And it does depend on lo little details like the wind. If there's a tiny crosswind, that wake of the car, 32 car lengths behind, you won't see any of it because the crosswind will just take it away. Mm. And in a corner, for me, the cornering wake is really, really interesting. I was going to say, this is a straight line. What yeah, is the corner? But in a, in a corner, you give the air momentum, so the air is being dragged along with the car behind, but as the car goes around the corner, that air is basically continuing in a straight line, and, and oh, the yeah. car is punching new air out the way, so you don't want to be slightly outboard of a car going around a corner. You will run more and more out. You know, you'll, you'll run into the marbles and off the track. Right. But if the guy in front overdrives a little bit because you're putting pressure on him and starts to slide out and you have enough grip to be able to take an inside line, you'll start to get more and more grip again. Logically, yeah. yeah. So the air, the air behind is being pulled along very, very directly behind And here we see how long being, the effect is of and that. And the, the effect yeah. is yeah. very, very long. So there's the dirty air. 
And wow. so the, the, the car coming along second is actually hitting air, traveling already at part of his speed, mm. and therefore the downforce you generate and the drag you generate is in proportion lower. Now oh, here's, okay. the, here's the rear wing wake, mm -hmm. and the rear wing wake, generally speaking, on all Formula One cars, the rear wing in normal conditions is going to actually go over the top of the car behind, mm -hmm. so it is not a concern n normally. The rear wing wake, if you have the DRS open, so in racing, the lead car will never have the DRS open right. unless he's overtaking a, a lapped so, car or something yeah. like this. Um, but if you are in a train of three cars, so this guy creates a wake that goes over the top, and by the time it's dissipated, it, it's never seen again. This guy in the DRS zone opens his DRS, and this wake comes down, and comes down such that a third car coming along Will, will benefit additionally also from mm. the wake of the, of the rear wing. So the wake right. is actually, the wake of a, of, a, of a wing with the DRS open is a smaller wake than this, but, but, but the fact that it's smaller isn't, mm. isn't hurting you, this you never see, so this doesn't help you at all. But with the DRS open, you still have a rear wing wake, right. and it will be influencing the drag of the car behind. So the, the car behind gets the benefits of this car, plus the, the, the DRS open, or the indirect benefits of this car, plus this car, and then we'll the rear thing, wing yeah. hmm. being lower, you get an additional benefit. So you do rarely, because it's really difficult to overtake in Formula One, but rarely you will see a, a car that's third in a train take both. Right, for and exactly that reason. Yeah. For exactly that mm. reason. You get that additional little benefit.